Hey guys, uh, how are you doing? My name is Eric, and I am with uh, Startup Wise Guys. It's actually a pleasure to be in Yerevan. Uh, I, I've had a great time sharing pictures and stories with my friends back home. Uh, they would never have expected me to be here. I'm originally from Glendale, California, so I, I grew up there. My first fight was with an Armenian guy. It was, it was pretty funny. Um, anyways, at the moment, I live in Estonia. And what we do in Estonia is we're a business-to-business -business accelerator. It's called Startup Wise Guys, and we take early-stage startups, and we help them and prepare them for later stages of business. So what I'm here to talk about today is not necessarily the accelerator. What I'm here to talk about today is when choosing a business model, should you consider a B2B, business-to-business -business route, or should you consider a business-to-consumer route? So I have one first initial question. Why B2B? Well, it, it was easy for us. Um, our successful portfolio companies have all been B2B. Our mentor pool, we have 80 international mentors. All of them come from a B2B background. And thirdly, the Estonian ecosystem really uh, parallels the B2B business model. So I have another question for all of you. How many of you bought one beer this weekend? One beer. One beer? Two beers? Three beers. Uh, maybe not you, maybe because you were uh, organizing the event. But maybe last weekend you had a few. No, I, I just, one. just one. Okay, okay. Good answer. How many of you purchased an app this weekend? Actually paid for an app? One person? Two people? Two people bought an app. So, why B2B? Uh, how many of you got a free app? Downloaded a free app this weekend? Quite a few more. Okay, okay. So, B2C is like the wild, wild west. Um, businesses are willing to pay. Businesses are willing to pay for services, and as we can see just in this room, consumers are not willing to pay. Uh, would you pay a dollar to use Instagram? No, no he doesn't even use it and it's free. Uh, maybe WhatsApp, but they have a lot of competition that's also free. Snapchat, I don't think anyone, anyone in their right mind would pay to use Snapchat. But these are, these are the successes we think about when we think of billion dollar technology companies. However, over the past 10 years, there have been twice as many B2B enterprise companies that have become billion dollar businesses compared to consumer companies. And why is this? Well, we hear about Facebook, we hear about Twitter, we hear about these successes, and everyone uses them. I'm not knocking them, I'm not saying they're terrible. I use them every day. I've used Twitter five times today since I've been here, and I've been supposedly working or <laughs> getting ready for this presentation. Um, but the businesses that support Twitter and support Facebook. Those are the companies that are making real money. And these are the types of businesses that I urge you to consider when looking at your revenue model. So presently, companies are spending $500 billion annually with legacy enterprise businesses. That's a huge number. That, there's a lot of money that you can pull out of this. There's a lot of money on the table, and there's a lot of money for implementation. And going forward into the future, well, the future is right around the corner. By 2016, 70% of chief information officers will have adopted a cloud-first strategy, which just opens up for more opportunity. Uh, for example, Japan. Remember in uh, 2012 when they had this earthquake tsunami? Well, businesses flocked to get integrated with the cloud. Well, they did this, and then they came across certain problems. One is, uh, was the data secure. Two uh, was it actually cost-effective to implement on the cloud. And three, how well did it link with other systems? Those are three opportunities in business today. Um, well, at, at the end of the day, they ended up going and they were very happy with this switch and this transition into the cloud. Uh, McKinsey, which is a consulting agency in the States, um, they do reports on business. They predict that the overall impact of the cloud can reach $6.2 trillion within the next 10 years or by the year 2025. That's just even more massive. There is so much money to be had. So well, let's talk about trends for a second. Uh, this, I know this chart's a little difficult to see, um, but the darkness and size of the square represent uh, exits of businesses and amount of funding that businesses have received. So as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, that represents social media and social uh, businesses. That is a huge, huge, huge part of the graph. Um, the rest of the stuff you can't see, but I wrote it out for you. And social was king 
in 2007, 2008. Just to put this in perspective, I was in my first year of university now, and Facebook had you know just become very popular. People were starting to use Twitter. Uh, it was it was the movement. This is what was happening. Followed by gaming and advertising, very traditional internet uh, types of industries. Now, looking forward to 2011, 2012, we have the exits in funding. And social represents a large piece of this still. Uh, not the most uh, dominant, as, and especially not as dominant as it once was. But that being said, it's been, over, it's been overtaken by certain businesses. So exit, social is still in the top three, quite impressive. But now business intelligence and advertising has actually overcome. And you can, you can probably tell advertising is a huge revenue stream for social businesses. Even look at Twitter now. It's overcoming this. So there's things that can be built on top of platforms, other businesses that can be built on top of platforms. Um, if you look at funding, cloud, SaaS, big data, advertising, and business intelligence are all now being more funded than social businesses. That being said, what, what, is, what is the exit market going to look like in the next four years? What does it currently look like? Well, we're not quite sure. We don't have the exact numbers. But we can assume that cloud, SaaS, big data are all going to be very relevant players. And we can assume that there's plenty of opportunity to be had here, especially as these businesses grow and mature. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, many opportunities, especially in the cloud, especially many uh, concerns uh, with security. Um, the cloud market is expected to reach $150 billion this year. And this is from Forbes. A couple other uh, figures on the cloud market. 76% of businesses will increase their cloud usage. And 92% of all people or all businesses who are using cloud are completely satisfied with uh, their services. By the year 2016, three out of five data centers will all be in the cloud. This is, this is just what's happening. This is where the opportunity lies. So security, this is a huge, huge problem. Trust is the number one barrier to cloud adoption globally. 55% uh, of people in 2012, decision makers that were surveyed, expressed concerns. That number was still close to 50% a year later. Uh, we have to, we're moving in the right direction. We're starting to trust uh, the secure data now, but not as fast as we should be, which just leaves the window of opportunity more open. So um, does anybody know? Here's actually just a uh, very, you don't, you don't win anything if you guess right. Does anybody know the number one most used password on the internet today? Password. Password. Very close. Password one is the number one most used password. And what's that? No, no, well, one, two, three, four, five is number two. So if you're concerned about security, don't use these passwords. I mean, come on, these are probably like our, our grandparents who are using like, oh, password one, it's gonna be safe. Uh, so it's just, I thought that was funny when I was doing research for this. Um, payments, payments is another huge opportunity. Uh, has anyone heard of TransferWise? TransferWise. They um, essentially they're a mobile payment solution. Uh, to put this in perspective, uh, the size of this market is supposed to reach one trillion dollars by next year. Big market. So transfer-wise, essentially they forego the bank. If I want to make a mobile transfer to someone, uh, normally banks can charge on a three hundred dollar transaction 12, 12 euros. Sorry, I was using dollars. A three hundred euro transaction, banks can charge up to twelve euros and can take a few days to make this transfer happen. Uh, TransferWise and other, comp other competitors in the market, other players in the market, such as TransferGo, they charge a flat rate, um, somewhere around three euros, and they've actually saved. Uh, TransferGo, a Lithuanian company, has actually processed 25 million euros of transactions, delivered the next day securely, and have saved uh, on that 25 million euros almost, almost two, bil uh, two million for the users. So people transferring money to maybe their family back home don't have to worry about paying 20, 25 euros on a transfer. It's big, big opportunity, big money. Um, and yeah, we'll move on. SaaS is something I touched on earlier. Uh, this is software as a service. Essentially what it is, it's, it's licensed technology, licensed software that allows people to interact with this information uh, and this uh, software anywhere. So I'm here in Yerevan and I'm acting with the same software as I would be back, back home in Estonia. Uh, it's very simple. 82% of investments in the cloud are in the SaaS market. Uh, an accelerator stat, 36% of all applicants and all uh, participants in accelerators actually have SaaS, uh, SaaS programs. 
And Gartner, which is another research agency, expects SaaS revenue to eclipse 22 billion US dollars by next year. Data. Now, this is my personal favorite. It, big data. Big data, exactly. So, here, I'm going to throw a number out. 90% of the data created through, from the very first point in human history has been created in the past two years. Astounding. 90% of all data used by big businesses goes unused. Another astounding number. So, huge opportunity in this field. Two out of three U.S. businesses say that big data will become a concern in the next five years. I, I, I just see the opportunity. If you can, and I see the opportunity. If you can figure out how to visualize this data, if you can make this data understandable for these large businesses, you have, you have business. You're going to make money. Almost 40%, 37.5% of large organizations said that analyzing big data is their biggest problem. Um, and bad data or poor data costs U.S. I'm sorry for all the U.S. numbers. That's where the most research is. Uh, bad data or poor data cost U.S. businesses $600 billion last year in decisions. So let's just, let's just consider this for a minute. Um, another, another astounding number, or another obvious uh, hit in the face, is social data. So all the information that we're putting on Twitter, all the information we're putting on Facebook, all the photos we're uploading, all these hashtags, all these em every time you click log in with Facebook, you get all this information. All these numbers are now being able to be analyzed. And companies, two in particular, have capitalized. So uh, one company, Topsy, it's social analytics, and they just sold to Apple for $200 million. And listen, I mean, it's not like the $17 billion that Facebook paid for WhatsApp, but this is an actual business. This business actually generates revenue. So to me, this, is, this whole market is skewed, and they're actually doing something good. They're providing information for people to use. Um, this was also uh, before these, this big rush of large acquisitions. So maybe if they held off for another year, they could have been closer to $1 billion. But this is an acquisition we don't even hear about because no one cares. No one cares about the information that's being played with them. Um, Datasift, they've recently raised over $70 million. And now they're, they're a big player in social analytics as well. And they're moving into enterprises. So they're going to take the social information and not only sell it to small business, but they're going to sell it to enterprises. Now large organizations are going to know what we're doing. Um, so that's, this being said, all these industries are awesome and all this information is awesome. But startups often forget one thing, especially when it comes to B2B, and that is sales. It's all about sales. If you want to make money, you have to have a business strategy, and you have to have sales. You have to make revenue. So 95% of decision makers want human interaction. The number two things they want in terms of uh, doing business with the company is they want to trust the company, and they want to understand what they're paying for. So these, these are the three key things, and this is why sales is so important. Another, another key important factor is content. Content creation is, has never been easier. And it's never been, um, okay, let's take it back, let's take it back one step. When you're, when you're watching, when you're reading a document or reading an article for school, maybe it's three pages long, there's a five minute video on YouTube that covers the same information, what are you going to use? You're going to watch the video 100% of the time. No one wants to sit back and read. These same people want to do the same thing. They want to understand the business and this is huge opportunity for you to portray your message as an enterprise. So, it's also, at the same time, never been easier to target your leads. Sorry, there's no image. Completely uploaded the wrong, the wrong one today. Uh, that being said, it's never been easier as a business to target your leads. So whether this is through LinkedIn or Twitter, you can get personal information about the decision maker. You can get information about the company that you want to do business with. And you can really target in on who you want to contact. Now, let's say you wanted to contact someone and you found him. Okay, now you look at his Twitter and you find some personal insights about the guy. Maybe he loves basketball. Maybe he's really into 3D printing. You can really connect with people on a much deeper level based on how much information they put out there. And this is all information that is so accessible, it, it is absurd. So, maybe now you'll consider B2B in your revenue model. It's not as boring as people think. Try not to think like a consumer, but there are applications that you can use B2B to see. There are so many different uh, opportunities out there, and you don't have to think about these mobile apps for the next 
the next way to hang out with your friends. You can, you can actually make a, make a difference with, with large organizations. That being said, my name is Eric. Here's my contact information. Um, if you have any questions about Startup Wise Guys, I'd love to chat. If you have any questions right now, I'd love to answer them. Um, any questions? Yes? The quick question. So you talked about the cloud and numbers, et cetera. Um, and you talked about it from the business to business perspective. But what's your personal opinion about cloud? <laughs> I think, it, I mean, it has to be the future. Think about it. It's, it's where everyone's investing their money at the moment. Um, even businesses are updating their stuff. I think there is a little gray area with how data security still. Honestly, there, there has to be. But it's only going to get better. Um, if we're worried about our information being hacked into, it's already been done. People already have information about us. So would you say that your biggest concern, like your personal concern, is privacy rather than not having your information on your computer, not somewhere else? You know, I, like you can't access like, your information if you're cut up from the internet. Well, luckily, I'm not a person that has a lot of influence, so people aren't going to be stealing, trying to steal my my information. Um, that being said, I do like the fact that I can get my information on my phone, if if it's stored in the cloud. Like my business, my job requires me to travel a bunch, so if I can just pull my information up, uh, pull a presentation up on my phone, and then have access to this, I I love this. It's it's only going to get easier, and people are only going to move towards this. So I think like people were scared about the internet a long time ago. People are always scared about change. People are always worried about change. But what I'm stressing, and what Wise Guys as an accelerator, what we stress too, is what is the accelerator going to look like in five years? What are businesses going to look like in five years? What is what is what we do on a daily basis with our technology going to look like in five years? And the cloud is the cloud is only going to be there. And if you have a problem with it, or if like, I'm not saying you do, but I'm saying if you see a, a way to fix it, if you see a solution, then start working on it. Because in five years, you could be right. So I, it's, it's, like, it's almost like a, it's new territory and huge opportunity. So there's, there's two things I say to this. One, you're absolutely correct, especially with enterprise. Like if you're, if you're 18, 22, just starting school, finishing school, you're not going to be able to jump into Microsoft and say, I have your solution. It's just not going to happen. It's going to take experience. Um, most, you know, just even getting hired by Microsoft right out of school, whether you want to or not, is quite difficult. Um, that being said, there's a ton, the entrepreneurial spirit is strong, especially in an event like this. And there's a ton of opportunity within SMEs. There's a ton. Like people, people are willing to pay who have small businesses twenty, thirty dollars a month for SaaS for a SaaS product if it is beneficial. So if you can find a need, and obviously you're not just going to have an idea right now. You're going to do your research and you're going to come up with a solution and you're going to see an opportunity. But that being said, I I, I completely agree with you. Um, but there are business applications that you can do. Um, point of sale stuff like in, within retail shops. You can take you can take your business and sell to businesses that sell to consumers. Uh, wise guys is solely B two B, yeah. But you're you're completely right. It takes experience. Any other questions? How can you apply to wise guys? That's a great question. Come talk to me after. Anyone who's interested, come talk to me. Uh, we have a website, startupwiseguys.com. There's a tab you can click apply. You apply through F Success. If you're interested, come speak to me. It's also partially why I'm here. Our applications end in three days. We're not supposed to advertise for ourselves. Any other last questions? Is there any wise girls, not white guys? <laughs> <laughs> That's a, okay. So yes, actually, we, uh, we actually have just made a new proposal. Uh, we will be accepting more female entrepreneurs than the industry standard. That being said, the amount of female entrepreneurs is very low. Um, so if you, if, especially in business, yes. So if you have an idea or something, like we are, we're very uh, pro-female, like equality. Like we can't say we're pro-female because that make we're we're very we're equal. <laughs> we we like that. We yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else?
about some hardware solution? If you have hardware and there's software tied to it, like most hardware, if you've made your hardware yourself, good for you. Like that's awesome. Um, if you have software that's also linked up with it, uh, let come talk to us. Like this is this is what we find very intriguing. What can we do? Um, yeah, how can we how can we overlap the two? To be completely honest, in Talon we also have a hardware accelerator. Um, they only focus on hardware companies. But if you have if you have strong supporting software, we're very interested. <laughs> um, sometimes I have to slow down, but <laughs> it's actually our, the Armenian audience is so much nicer. I'm, now I'm not comparing and saying it's better or worse, but in Estonia, if I was up here presenting, everyone would just be sitting there like <laughs> they, they like they maybe like it, but they don't show as much emotion. And here, the amount of engagement you get afterwards, it's just the people who raise their hand in the audience. It's awesome. I, I really really like it, um, but. It's good Especially uh, if you will stay for our party and we can have beer. Yes, yes. Yes. Two. Thank you. <laughs> We're collecting a bar camp event selfies, so. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Anna, you're up? Oh, later? Okay. Just kidding. Do you want do you want my laptop still? Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> a little, a little sweaty they, there. They will take it out. Don't worry. <laughs> Was that information useful? Was that uh, for me? Yeah. I mean, so always, always nice to know that there is such a good thing that uh, like, 